welcome to our session, and uh, thanks for showing up. Um, today we're going to talk about one of our recent projects that we did for uh, a municipality of a Danish city called uh, Kolling. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take you through all the different stages of the project, um, starting with uh, wireframing and design, and then moving on to implementation and, and finally development. Um, but let's just take a look at uh, today's session. Um, of course, we get, we're just going to introduce ourselves to, to begin with, and uh, we're going to introduce you to the case, uh, and then we're going to take you through the different stages. Um, and there will be some time for questions in the end. Um, so uh, who are we? Uh, we all work at RedBub and uh, Red Component. Um, my name is Kim, and I'm a graphic project manager. Um, and I'll be introducing the case to you, and I will uh, be talking about wireframing and design. And uh, Bo, this is in the front row there, is uh, the front end project manager, and uh, he will be talking about the implementation. And finally, Suna, uh, the technical project manager, will be talking about the development used in, in this uh, project. So um, let's talk about the case. Um, like I said, we had to make a website for uh, a municipality uh, of a Danish city called uh, Kolling. And one of the requirements was that it had to be open source. Um, and we were actually in the running to be picked to, to actually make this project uh, among a lot of other competitors. Um, and, and fortunately, they chose us. And fortunately, fortunately they chose Joomla. Um, so we were pretty excited about that. Also, uh, because of the fact that this is actually one of the first uh, municipality sites to actually run Joomla. Um, so it might, um, it might open the window for other similar sites to, to also uh, run Joomla. So um, like I said in the beginning, we had to redesign the website. Um, but we also had to show uh, the content in a, well, in a new and optimized way. Um, and, and of course, we had to think of the structure as well. We had to think of. Um, how we could maybe narrow down the menu items because there were so many options on, on their old side. Um, so we had to make it simple. We had to make it easy to use. Um, but we also have to think of, uh, of a new way of, of navigating the site, um, a new and smart way, yet logical way of navigating. And we also had to make a, a, a mobile template for the website. So. Um, I guess most of you know what a wireframe is, but for those of you who don't, um, it's kind of an overview of the elements used uh, on the website and the placement of those elements. Um, and, and think of it as, as kind of a blueprint of the website, um, just kind of boxes with names in them. I'll show you in a bit. Um, but you might also be asking, why make a wireframe at all? And um, well, the short answer is that it will make your life like uh, a hell of a lot easier because, uh, like I told you, you have the overview and, and you actually just need to put the design and, and the colors on these elements. Well, it's not just adding the design and no, but it will, it will make that process a lot easier. Um, and, and maybe more importantly, when, when this wireframe is, is approved by the client, uh, the client knows what, what you expect, what to expect from the project. And there's a kind of a mutual agreement on uh, what the project will be like. Um, so, so this is why you have to make a wireframe. And, and let's take a look at how you make a wireframe. Um, there, there are like many techniques out there to make a wireframe. And I've like chosen the, the most simple one, uh, a technique that you guys can use also if you are able to make a wireframe. Um, and it's actually something simple as, as post-its. Um, take a bunch of post-its, write the element names on them, place them on the table, and just puzzling, puzzling them around until it makes sense to you, until you have like an overview of a website. Um, take your phone, take a photo of it, and let's just move on and uh, do all the special pages that you actually need to design. Um, and, and when you're done, you have all the information needed to, to actually create the initial wireframe or the real wireframe. And there's, there's a lot of different uh, programs out there to, to actually make the wireframe. Um, personally, I use something called Axure. I don't know if you guys know it. Um, but it's kind of a Photoshop and Illustrator. You draw the elements yourself, and you write inside those elements. And you place them wherever you want. Um, again, I'll show you in a bit. Um, but before we actually 
start making this wireframe, we usually have this kind of a workshop with the client. Um, and we also did in this case with Colin. Um, and, and what we do here is that we, we sit down with the client, we talk to the client and the ones from the company. Um, we're sketching down ideas. We're writing down structure and menu items. We kind of agree on how things will be. Um, and this is a, a few pictures from, uh, from that workshop. Um, and as you can see, we asked them to just you know, team up in groups of like two or three people. Um, each group will represent an area from that municipality. Um, and we asked them to, to, to kind of write down their idea of a structure. Um, because we know a lot about usability and web design and so on. But they're using this every day. So of course, we have to use their knowledge. Um, and, and in the end, we compared all the results. And we, again, talked about it, sketched ideas down. And, and all this information, we'll use this informa information for, for creating the wireframe when we come back to the office. Um, of course, we also had to <coughs> think of the structure. Um, because on their old side, that I'll show you in a few minutes, there were like so many options. And we had to narrow down the amount of menu items. Um, and we actually ended up with only four main menu items. One for citizen, one for industry, one for politics, and one for the municipality. Um, and of course, we, can just, we, we can't just delete all the areas. So we kind of hit them away in the mega menu. So when you click on, for example, citizen, you can just choose family and children if that's the area you want to uh, read more about. Um, so we, we're making it more simple. We're simplifying the site, but making it easier to, yeah, to navigate. Um, and when we made this uh, the wireframe, or the initial wireframe, um, we came up with, a, with an idea of using situations for navigation. Um, let's say you come to the site, and, and you're in a situation where you actually need your child taken care of. And what you see is you see a big picture, and a headline that says, I need my child taken care of. So of course you'll click on that situation and you'll go straight to the content page, explaining what you need to be aware of and, and, and how you actually sign your child up for daycare. But again, I'll show you when, when we show the sign. Um, so this is all the information that we actually need to, to create the wireframe. And this is just like two pages from the wireframe, a rather large wireframe. Um, and as you can see, that I told you, like I told you in the beginning, it's made of, of elements, just simple elements. And well, this is actually a rather detailed wireframe, but usually it's just boxes with names in them. Um, and, and the important thing here is, is, is to not add too much color, pictures, etc., because it will just uh, make the design process uh, a lot less creative. Um, and the client will also think that if we added a red color, then that box will be red. So don't confuse them. Um, and as you can see here, we have um, the front page and the front page for citizen, if you click on citizen. Um, on the front page, there is um, a, an, Im an image slider and some uh, news. And then the upper right corner, there's this situations box that are listed all the, the common situations, most common situations when you visit the municipality side. Um, and when you click on, for example, citizen, you can see there's, there's these six common situations that we have visualized with a picture and a text. It'll be a lot easier when you see the actual design in a few minutes. Um, but then again, you, you just click on citizen, and suddenly you can relate to the situations. You can associate yourself with the situations. So in like three clicks, we'll be at the content page. Um, and again, um, on the front page for like citizen, for one of the segments, um, we can of course not show all the situation on the front page with Im images and, and text. So, um, so the box in the upper right corner will list other related situations um, to that area. Um, so, so now we have the wireframe ready, and, and let's let's have a look at, at the design. Um, and here the keywords were. I've mentioned it before, it's simplicity and usability. Um, and well, the fact that it had to be different from other similar sites, other municipality sites. Because 
they tend to be a bit conservative, a bit uh, template-ish. Um, so we wanted to make something new and something different, um, but still retaining the seriousness of, of the site. Um, and like I told you before, we added this mega menu for each of the segments um, to both to make it look more simple, but also to, um, to, 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 to hide away some of all the options. Um, and of course, images are an important part of this because that's what you see, that's what you associate yourself to. So you have to use a lot of time for picking the right images. Um, they had uh, this red color in their logo, and of course we used that well as well, but kind of tweaked the colors to make it match and make, it, make the site more appealing. Um, but enough talk, let's, let's see an example. This was their old website, and as you can see, there's just so many options. <laughs> you don't know where to click. Um, and in fact, this is just like a small portion of the website, or of the front page, sorry. Um, and you could like scroll forever until you got to the bottom. Um, and of course, we analyzed this uh, using Google Analytics and, and uh, Krasiak. And especially Krasiak gave us some interesting answers. Um, it showed that, well, we used a scroll map and a heat map. I don't know if you guys know it. Um, it shows how many people will be scrolling down the side and where they click. Um, and it's illustrated with a color, like the heat map, uh, the red color is, is signaling that here, here, will, uh, here the people are clicking. <coughs> and um, actually it showed that they're clicking on only four or three or four of these items. The rest will be using the search function. So it kind of shows that you don't know what, how to use the site. So again, this just points out that we had to make it more simple. Um, but, but then again, it, they have to be able to go down the normal route, you know, pick all the, the menu items and until the, they get to the content page. But again, using these situations, we can do that in a few clicks. Um, but let's take a look at the new design. And here you see the front page and, and the mega menu. Um, again, we only have these four um, main menu items, one for citizen, industry, politics, and uh, the municipality. And of course, in the image slider, you can just show the most important things right now in the municipality or in the city uh, itself. Um, and again, in the upper right corner, we have this uh, situation box that will show the most common situations. Um, but most importantly, when you click on, for example, citizen, you get to this front page for citizen um, showing you these situations. Um, and again, we use this red color for the signal color because people will, will notice it immediately. Um, and, and like I told you in the beginning, let's, let's, say you, let's say one of the common situations is that people will, um, they're, they're getting a divorce, they're getting married, then that could be the situations. And when you're getting married or when you're getting a divorce, you have to fill out a lot of papers and do a lot of things. And, and all these things will be mentioned here on the side. Um, and and uh, on the image uh, on, the, on the right is actually the content page. And soon we'll be talking a lot uh, more about the component that we used, red, co co red content, sorry, um, where, we, where they could like, change the, the template of that content. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the details of the design because I could like, talk about that for like 10 hours, but um, I'm just going to point out a few things. We used this light gray color and this darker gray color, and we, um, we took the red color from the logo, but we tweaked it a bit to make it more appealing, more, more interesting. Um, we also added this, this shadow to the boxes to make it stand out more, but then again, don't only overuse it because we'll just make the site look yeah, bad and make it fall apart. So um, it has to be some sort of nice shadow. We also uh, used this um, interesting shape for the button, not just a regular uh, rectangle. And these are the things that you can actually use to make the site more interesting and more appealing, but yet retaining the seriousness of the site. Um, because if we made this too flashy and too, uh, you know, we, we're not here to impress uh, the users. We're here to, to easily show the users um, information about their problem. Because 
you all, you all have to think about the fact that a user visits the site because he or she has a problem to be solved. And if we can solve that problem in a few clicks, we have succeeded. Um, this was the design and, and, and the wireframing, um, and now we were like ready to go on with the implementation of the project, and uh, we'll, we'll be talking about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Bo, and uh, I'm uh, a front-end implementer, uh, so my responsibility in, in this project was to uh, take the ideas from GIM and uh, make them come to life. Um, well, part of it was uh, my responsibility. We also had uh, uh, we're going to uh, create a new component to uh, handle the content, and that was Asuna's uh, responsibilities. So the front end uh, implementation process and the development kind of ran simultaneous simultaneously. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I had to uh, to uh, take these ideas uh, that Kim make, made. Uh, that, they c that came up uh, through the work, work groups and the design process and implement those ideas um, to the layout of the site. Um, and of course, uh, again, we had to focus on, on, on the things that uh, we've mentioned before that had to be easy to access uh, uh, the information that you needed uh, and it had to be easy to read. Um, Part of my, my job is also to, to take some of the, the pages that, that haven't been designed in, in, uh, in the design process and, and, and take those ideas and, and implement that, those because we can't uh, make a Photoshop layout of all uh, the content pages uh, that are going to be, be shown on the site, for example, search results or, or something like that. So I have to, to grab those ideas and uh, implement them on, on these content pages. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice, I have a bad cold, but I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> um, during the, this process, um, we are um, we're basing it on a, a, a simple uh, template, simple in the terms of uh, it doesn't have a, a lot of uh, option and parameters in, inside the template. Um, we have a minimum amount of options that we are actually more or less only using ourselves as a, as a base, uh, to base, uh, have a basic template to, to work on. Uh, that means we have options to, to, um, to set up the, the, the width and height, height of the di different elements on the pages, like the, the blocks of, uh, of, of content on the pages. Uh, so we can set those up ourselves and uh, then place the, the layout on, on top of them, you could say. Um, so, so the purpose of these options is not that the, the client can go in and, and change the layout himself um, or, or themselves. Um, that's not the purpose because uh, the requirement for, for them was also that uh, they wanted a, a layout that they could use for many years to come. So, uh, so the idea is not that they can change this every, every second week. Um, it it uh, also uh, uh, minimizes the code output that we have only basic options. We don't have a huge framework behind it to control the, the layout. Uh, it's a minimized code output that also means uh, to minimize uh, the conflicts that uh, can be caused when we start developing uh, components and plugins and such. Um, but with that said, there are some design changes possible, just not directly inside the, the template options. We'll get more into it later, but uh, but as Kim mentioned, um, they are able to change the layout of the content in the itself, the article pages and, uh, uh, and the different content pages. They're able to change the layout of, uh, uh, of those themselves. We have also made it possible for them to change the, the layout of different modules that they're assigned to, to different areas, um, mainly the color scheme. So uh, if they have some box they need focus on, uh, then instead of having it, uh, it the normal white color, they can change it to red by just uh, uh, clicking on uh, a new layout, and then uh, an override will uh, will take uh, take care of the rest and uh, change the layout uh, and and the, the color scheme. Um, so in some cases, it could be uh, uh, possible for them to uh, to to change uh, that part of it. <coughs> Um, 
like all of other of our uh, projects, we we are not developing all the uh, the tools uh, used ourselves. We have many tools in our in our catalog, but uh, we are also dependent on, on some of uh, the other Joomla extensions out there. And, and we'll just mention a, a few of them. Uh, the mega menu that uh, Kim talked about is uh, is one called the uh, drop down mega menu that we're using. And uh, for the editors, we are using a, a Josca winner, JCE editor, uh, which is great, and we use a lot of their plugins as well. <coughs> um, on this side, they are going to have a hell of a lot of modules. So uh, the default Joomla module manual wouldn't cut it. Um, it would be uh, way too difficult for them to. Uh, to have an overview or, over uh, which modules uh, fit where, so they ha had to, to get some more advanced uh, manager. So obviously, advanced module manager was uh, the solution because they can group uh, their modules in, in color groups, so they can easily see, well, these modules belong to a citizen area, and these belong to the municipality area, etc. They, are, they want to send out newsletters, so accumulating is, is an obvious choice. And of course, SH447 for, for Ceph URLs. Then there's also some of uh, some commands we have uh, uh, done ourselves. Red list for, for listing content, basically. There's more to it than that, but uh, it's, uh, it could, for example, be listing of uh, employees uh, that we could use it for. Uh, so they could easily just type in information about their employees and then would uh, take the, the, the component will take care of the rest of the layout and such. So they don't have to, uh, to mess around with an article page and uh, tables and, and such. They can just type in the data on the employee and the component will take care of the rest. And red form for, for, uh, so they can uh, set up contact forms themselves, for example. And uh, well, uh, all these components uh, I also work with, uh, I have to I set them up and uh, style them uh, if needed. Um, it, well, and, and then of course we also develop red content. Well, it's a, it's a work in progress, we're still working on it. Um, but that's also one of the components that, that we have developed ourselves and, and that will be used for this project. Um, uh, another requirement for, for the client, from the client, was that they uh, uh, would be having some sub-sites. That means um, sites related to the municipality. That could be event pages, uh, page for, for theaters, uh, yeah, something related to, to, to the municipality. And uh, they wanted it to be easy to roll these sites out uh, by, by few clicks, and, and the site would be set up, and it would be more or less ready. Uh, so, in in these uh, template, uh, this template that we have uh, are going to create for for these sub sites will be a lot different from the template on uh, the main site because here there will be a lot of configuration options. They will be able to uh, to set up the designs uh, design themselves and change it depending on what subsite uh, it is. So that's also a work in progress, but it'll be uh, uh, a lot different from the the main template be uh, because there's all these options. Um, <coughs> as Kim mentioned, there is also a mobile version of the the page, which is also being developed. Um, we will be scaling down the, the, the main site uh, to, to fit the mobile platform. And we're going to be, be changing the layout uh, a bit. Well, the color scheme is, of course, the same. And the, the elements will also uh, be the same to some extent, but they'll be changed up a bit. Uh, for example, the menu changes from a horizontal a drop down mega menu to a vertical uh, menu to fit uh, the mobile platform. Um, uh, but of, of course, again, uh, it's easy. Uh, it's important that uh, it's easy to navigate through the site, even more on the mobile platform, because when people are using the mobile platform, uh, they they have less time and, and maybe less patience to, uh, to 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 go through a very complex site. So the original site that would never have <laughs> never fly on a mobile platform. Uh, but on, on this, we are, we are working towards making it more simple 
and uh, easy to navigate through it. <coughs> um, about the challenges we have faced, we have actually faced uh, in, in this process uh, a few challenges because um, we had a very good pre preparation. Uh, the work workshops that Kim talked about and all the meetings we have had with the client made us ready for, for implementing the, the, the site. So, so the, uh, there, there, ha there are some challenges, and there still are, but it's, some, so it's challenges, challenges that we are ready for, you can say. Uh, the, one of the main challenges th that we were ready for uh, was the structure of the content, <laughs> because it had to be easy for them to set up a content page. It had to be really easy, uh, foolproof, uh, because it, it, uh, the editors are not the most technical minded. Uh, they would have little to no knowledge of HTML and CSS. Uh, so there were, if they had to, to uh, set up a content page in the default uh, Joomla article editor, there would be a lot of things that could have gone wrong for them. Um, I have an example of a, a content page here, uh, well part of it, and one of the examples that I want to, uh, to, to show you that could have gone wrong potentially if they had to, uh, to set it up in a in Joomla article page. It, it's um, in the top you can see um, the, the, the list of, uh, yeah, uh, of words in the top uh, right below the headline um, and it's kind of like a, a menu inside the content article. The, the different headlines uh, there uh, with the bullet point in front uh, are links to headlines in the article itself. So uh, uh, on the, the article headings, there are anchor points, and we link down to them. Uh, and that's, again, uh, uh, to, uh, to have easy accessibility to information. They can just uh, go into the article and say, hey, okay, I only need to know about this point, and click to it, and they, they'll be at the headline. But if they had to do that in a uh, Joomla article page, it would be possible. But there would be a lot of things that could go wrong for an for, uh, uh, editor who has little to no knowledge about HTML or CSS. <clears throat> um, so one of the, th the things we have done is that uh, the editors and the, uh, the forms where you create the articles, they will have, they will have a minimum of amount of options available. Um, so for example, um, if you have a teaser text, there will be no editor at all. Um, there will just be a uh, text area you can tap into, uh, so you can't mess that up, uh, more or less. Um, and also, uh, these bullet points, these um, headlines, they would be uh, generated automatically uh, when you add more sections. Uh, sooner we'll get more into that, uh, but it's a matter of having more uh, sections, uh, then they'll be creating more headlines, of course. Um, so that's, uh, that's more or less uh, this and um, sooner he will be talking more about uh, red content and how you uh, uh, how we face that uh, challenge and development that. Yeah. Hi, my name is Sune. I'm the technical project manager at uh, Red Web, and uh, I'm also working at Red Component. And uh, for this. Uh, Special project, we have um, made a new component. Um, you actually can see some of the features here. Um, when we started, we were looking uh, through the ordinary article management in Joomla and uh, came to the conclusion that it, it wasn't good enough. One of the main concerns was the amount of data we are going to put into the tables. Um, Actually, we had an earlier project where we had about 14,000 pages of pagination. And when you reach that point, some of your MySQL uh, is, uh, is breaking down and some of the tables are, well, not working. <laughs> and another thing we wanted was uh, control, completely control over the data flow, where we uh, retrieve the data from and where we are, uh, are putting the data into the tables. Uh, and with that comes the comfort in knowing precisely where uh, your data is going, where uh, to retrieve from. Um, they have some requirements for this uh, project, and we built those into the 
into the component from the beginning. They wanted the flexibility in the front end design, which means that we, we made a template system for them where they can tag uh, the dynamic fields into and just make a, a small CSS uh, class inside uh, the template manager. Uh, easy to navigate also in the back end because we are not dealing with all technical uh, personal persons. So we had to make uh, a easy navigation and actually we made a explore view that's kind of uh, Windows uh, navigation. I'll show you later on, on some screen dumps how it, it looked like. Um, we had to make an integration to uh, another system. Uh, we have made a uh, XML import. Uh, dynamic in content, they can uh, add fields, input fields to, uh, to the templates uh, to say if they want another text area, they can uh, put in another text area uh, in the template directly. We have uh, extended the Joomla ACL management a little by uh, because they have a lot of users and they have some demands for, for writers and uh, editors. Um, again, we, uh, we had to make an intuitive user face, the structure of the forms. We were in, in contact with the client that says, well, it's not intuitive that you have to fill out the intro text before the headlines and so. So they were in over the structure as well. Um, we have recursive categories, which means that we have unlimited categories. Uh, a category can have unlimited child categories. So it's very flexible that way. Also, they wanted to have versioning on, of the articles, which means that when you have an article and you save it, it, it makes a new version. So you can always roll back to an earlier version. And you can also see who's accountable for the changes and uh, who has written the text. Um, also, we had to uh, handle this uh, load of data that's coming in um, because the, the page is, is going to be very big in, in text and articles. And of course, they wanted uh, to be able to uh, plug in videos and audio and uh, we use uh, some um, JCE extension and uh, we have made our own for, for images. But the JCE extension has uh, uh, HTML5 player that's working very good. So we use that. Um, yeah, we start building the component by um, making a database structure that is a little different. Uh, we decided that when you have um, the, the, the page is uh, set in four main areas. And each of these areas we call segments. And each segment, when you make a segment, it will make a, a cluster of uh, tables in the database. So you don't run into performance options or uh, crashing data, ta data tables. Um, we also wanted to make uh, CCK easy. Not that, that some of the other systems isn't easy, but we wanted it to be much more easy. Also for us as, as developers and for Bo to set up, um, so we know where the data is coming from and where the data is going. Um, we have made an XML import feature where you can uh, upload the XML file and uh, map the, the data from the XML uh, tables or areas into your table. So it's, it's working pretty good. And um, of course, it had to be uh, easy to expand. It has uh, for us to be easy to, to say, well, if you want that feature, we can easily read through the code and, and know where to insert that feature. Uh, the template system. Why did we make a template system? Why not just keep uh, front-end templates and say, well, that's what you got? Uh, they wanted to be flexible, and we want to make something that's flexible and can be used by others, not only for this one project, but also to, to release at some point and, and say, well, you can build your own templates without knowing any PHP code. So, and we do that by uh, some tags that uh, when you make your fields, your input fields, uh, you make a field code, and that field code you are using as a tag in your template. So you know that when you write that uh, uh, tag into your template, it will retrieve the data from that input field. So 
the template, you only build one that uh, are used in the back end and in the front end. So in the back end, it's used to uh, define which input fields you have. If you have like 500 uh, text editors, let's say you have <laughs> gone mad and built 500 uh, text editor fields, you can say I only want to use five of those in this template. And in the back end, you only get the five. And uh, you, you uh, at the same time, you build the front end CSS in so with classes and so on. So, and uh, we made this uh, small feature that you can, if you have more than one article template, you can actually change the template at the menu point. So when you're making a new menu, you have an article with, let's say, five areas of text. You can have a template that only shows one area of text. And then you can choose that editor, allowed, that uh, template instead of the other, so you only get what that template contains. So, um, then we have uh, three different kinds of templates. We have uh, article templates that uh, for, the te for the page design, and then we have uh, category templates that decides which uh, data you want to be listed, uh, like in a list. And then we have uh, segment uh, templates that are used on uh, an another level. So it's a bit more tricky because you have the, the whole segment and the categories for the segment, and then you have the article. So, and uh, how we work is just a, a little talk about that we are uh, all working on Windows machines. Uh, we use Eclipse for uh, our environment, uh, WAMP and XAM uh, with Git in, in the Eclipse. And uh, of course, we use uh, servers at Red Host. Uh, in this project, we used uh, Google Spreadsheets for the first time, uh, where we uh, made a sheet of uh, small pointers that has to be done, and who has done what, and when it should be done. And then we shared it uh, in the development section with Bo also, so he could write in stuff uh, that he needed us to do. <laughs> um, we also used TimeLog and, and Redmine. Time log we basically use to, s to log in the time that we use on a project, so uh, it's, it will be easier to guesstimate the next time frame for a project. So um, We have chosen to uh, make some screenshots instead of a live demo because of the internet is, uh, is a little broken here. So um, this is actually an overview of, uh, of the segment in, uh, in this uh, project. As you can see, they have a lot of, of segments. Not all of them is on the, f on the, on, on the front page, um, but, but they have some, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but they have some that's called uh, administration and test. Of course, they have a test. And uh, then we also have an import section segment that you can import from the XML file into that section, and then you take the articles from that section and put them into the right segments. Um, here we have the, the field view, where you can see all the fields that you uh, have uh, made, and then you can uh, easily just add fields. Uh, here you choose the field name, and then you choose your field code. You write in your field code, no special characters, of course, uh, and that will uh, be used as the tag the template system. Here you also choose which, which kind of field type it is. It could be a uh, text input, it could be uh, editor, text area, image, uh, date field, uh, where we use the ordinary uh, Joomla date field. Um, and uh, you also have the opportunity to write in a tool tip, uh, that will actually show up in, in uh, your template when you are filling out the content. And of course you can choose whatever or not to publish the, the field. This is the template. It looks something like this. Of course, there is uh, over this section, there's a way you write in the name. Under this section, there's an editor where you can write a short description for the template. Uh, but this is what the template is built of. It builds, it's built of these small tags that, that actually are, are fields in the database. So it's very easy to set up. Uh, 
There are some, the menu tag is, is, is used to build the, the anchor menu that Bo was talking about in the design. And the uh, anchor is, is used to retrieve the, the anchor points down in the text. So, uh, and uh, here you see the, the code view of that. You can see a lot of views and uh, some classes. And, uh, and Bo has, uh, has styled those uh, in a different uh, style sheet. So all the classes are in there, and uh, yeah, it's working like good. <laughs> so um, then there's a, a category view where you also can see which categories are child's or other categories. You can also see the access uh, level and which template is chosen for the standard template for the category. So the category view, if you're making an and it should be this category, and you don't choose a template, it will always take the standard template. Uh, as well with articles, there are two options. You can you choose the article at the menu, and then you can choose another template. You don't choose the template, you choose the standard template. Here you can see just uh, a small form of uh, how to create a category. We choose the name and the, the segment it should be lined up under, and uh, also which category section it should be in. Um, then you choose the template, and uh, then we have some uh, access uh, ACL control. Here is the, the, con the, the explore view that we made, uh, because it's, uh, it works more familiar with people who are used to using Windows. So here you see the, the segments, and if you click on one of the segments, it will show the categories as folders. So you, you actually know that if you're putting or clicking one of the folders, you're going into that folder. And you can see there's a, 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 a file that's not in a category, but in that category, and the other folders are in the category. So very easy to use and very intuitive for users that maybe not so technical that. So. Yo, yeah, <laughs> we also have a, a copy-paste feature. Well, I almost forgot that. You can uh, mark the, the, the article you want to, to copy. To, uh, you just mark it and you push copy. Then you can go back and forth in the Explorer and even into another segment and just push the paste button and it will paste the, the copied article in there. And you can make, make that for a whole category as well. So it take uh, subcategories with it. So it's very easy to use. So, and of course you can delete stuff too. <laughs> um, when you are making a new category, you have uh, the first option you get is that you need to choose your uh, segment and you need to choose your category. Um, here you see from uh, from the calling case there are templates. Uh, when you uh, reach the step, you, you choose which template to use for your article. So here you have chosen your segment, your uh, category before this step, and here you have the option to choose the template. And uh, if you choose this template, uh, you are going into a, a view where you can start filling out the content. Uh, first, in this section, we have some mandatory fields. Uh, the, the, the article has to have a name, because if it don't, doesn't have a name, we cannot list it in the overviews. Um, they wanted an uh, accountable person, uh, so you cannot publish or make an article without an accountable person in this case. And of course, you can add an image, and uh, you have the option to uh, say, uh, that, that this, this article you can write comments to or, or not write comments to. So, uh, so that's an option too. And then of course we have uh, these uh, uh, release date and remove date. It's so that you can release an article in a time frame. Let's say that you're working with, with a news, uh, within, with a page that's making news and uh, you're going to re release some new news in the weekend. 
you can set it up and just set the, the release date to the weekend. So you can make it on a Friday, go home, and it, the news will be released during the weekend. So, and uh, when you are done and you make your menu point, uh, it should be looking something like this, hopefully. <laughs> um, the future of, of red content, of course we haven't built anything, all the things that we want into it. It needs uh, RSS option uh, to be easier. It needs uh, bootstrap, uh, of course. And uh, we want to build in some uh, support for other extensions, like maybe uh, Nina or you said it for translation. Uh, we are working on different kind of modules uh, to display text in a in a flow where you can uh, where you can like say we have a flow of ten articles, but I want article two to always be in the top, so if the flow will float around the articles that you put in different positions. Um, and of course, it will be released in about 14 days. We just need to tweak it a little more. <laughs> so, and the best part is that it's, it's going to be free and it's going to be downloadable from a red component. Uh, so uh, feel free to uh, download it and uh, report any bugs that you find, if, if any, and uh, email us uh, with your with suggestions uh, also to make it uh, better. I'll just say that I, I haven't made this uh, component by myself. We are four people working on it. So uh, if you have any very technical questions for some of the stuff, I might not be able to answer it. But I will leave my card so you can write me an email and uh, I'll make sure that you get an answer by mail uh, for your question. And uh, feel free to ask questions about the case to Bo and Kip. Bill, uh, thank you for your time. <laughs> so. What was the, uh, in the beginning you mentioned something about at the time when you were working out better. Sorry, I didn't get it. When you can see where you can Yeah. You mentioned another one. Yeah, keep it on. Um, it's, it's something called Crazy Egg. Um, sorry? So you were talking about um, Google Analytics and the other thing? Yeah, Exactly. It's called a Crazy Egg. Crazy Egg. Yeah. That's a funny name. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but what you do is that you install it on, on the side and, and you get all these um, options for like uh, the scroll map and the heat map and you activate them in the top. I haven't got a, a slide here to show it, but um, and when you click on, on heat map uh, set up properly, you can see different areas on the side and, and where they've clicked. So if it's a light color, it means less clicks and if it's a darker, warmer color, it means uh, more clicks. And it's a really great uh, tool and, and you should use it because it's really great for analyzing uh, uh, sites um, and not only using the stuff in Google Analytics, but actually being being able to see where they have clicked. Um, and and well, you might think that the user clicks somewhere, but often it turns out that they click somewhere else. So you need to have some uh, some some information about that too. Um, and you can also um, there are, there are more options. You can also activate. Uh, um, something that shows you the, the single clicks and not only by color but everywhere on the side. Um, and there's some smart features. You should check it out. Um, yeah? Any other questions? What do you use for the wireframe? Uh, it's called um, Axure, A-X-U-R-E. Um, it's, it, it's not an open source program. It costs money. Um, yeah, and, and the, it's really, really great. You can make prototypes in it too, but we use it for wireframing. And, and you, can, you, can on, you, can, you can like make a, a really simple wireframe with only like boxes in it. We can also make a really detailed wireframe if you like. Um, so there's a lot of options and they keep, um, they keep developing stuff for the program. So, and there's libraries for, for like different shapes and 
Yeah, exactly. Just drag and drop. That's really uh, A X U R E. So uh, make sure to check it out. Any more questions? Well, uh, thanks for showing up. It was great. <laughs>